Hello and welcome everyone back to the Outrank Tinnitus podcast. My name is Frida. I'm the host of the show. I'm also a professional tinnitus coach and I help people all over the world to live and build a better life despite tinnitus. I'm also the host of the Outrank Tinnitus community on Facebook, the most positive tinnitus community uh, online. Uh, there are enough negative communities where it's all about uh, the struggle and the bad things around tinnitus. In our community, it's all about positivity, um, sharing tips and tricks and insights um, that work in overcoming tinnitus. And in this episode, um, I realized I've never really actually made an episode on how my coachings actually work and uh, what my program uh, consists of. Um, it's really important for me to uh, tell you guys out there how I uh, approach tinnitus and how I work with the people uh, that I coach and how you can slay your tinnitus dragons and which swords um, can help you do exactly just that. So let's do the intro and then let's get right into the episode on how my coaching works and how you can slay your tinnitus dragons. Enjoy. Hello and welcome to the Outring Tinnitus podcast. This is Frida and I'm your host. This podcast is all about the tinnitus science and what you can do to live a better life despite the ringing. Yes, so after finally being back from holiday in Barcelona, we were um, in Spain visiting some friends uh, also over my birthday, my wife Stefania and me, she's always also previously been on this podcast. Um, we've had uh, quite an agreeable time and after the first few days where I just really needed to settle down the busy times of work and everything, I finally got into holiday mode and I really got to enjoy um, just relaxing at the beach and just reading something and just really taking time off, um, uh, off of thinking about uh, what the next piece of content is that I'm going to create for the tenants community, how I can uh, yeah, change and evaluate and um, basically evolutionize my program in order to tailor it and give you the guys the best experience um, on how to overcome uh, tinnitus. And I actually realized um, while working with um, actually more and more clients now that I've never actually made a formal episode where I explain a bit more what the tools are that you can use and the tools that I use in my coaching program in order to help people all over the world to yeah, get better with their tinnitus and to build their best life despite tinnitus um, because I know that's always a promise that I make but I, I don't think I've ever really uh, explained and talked to you guys here on the podcast through how it works. So I thought um, I named this one Slaying Your Tinnitus Dragons and the, thor the, the, the swords and tools that I um, have come up with that can help you do so, right? So it's like we, um, in the coaching process, we look at a lot of different things. Um, we evaluate um, uh, your being with tinnitus, but it goes into much more depth than just a tinnitus evaluation. So much more than just a diary that uh, informs of us um, the way you perceive tinnitus anxiety, the way you suffer um, from tinnitus and when are the most pressing moments and issues that come up and how you deal with them is something that is uh, crucially important. And uh, this is the first model that using cognitive behavioral therapy and using the ABC model of cognitive behavioral therapy of extensively covered that I think also in my podcast um, if you haven't uh, heard about that you can find uh, much more in my free tinnitus emergency guide go to outringtinnitus.com slash tinnitus minus emergency minus guide um, and you get the tinnitus emergency guide where um, it's written in written form how the cognitive uh, behavioral therapy model uh, ABC model helps with evaluating and analyzing your tinnitus to stepping aside and basically adopt a an outsider's perspective on um, yeah, your behavior towards tinnitus, um, your anxiety when it comes up and, and, and how it behaves, um, how you behave as a result of tuning or perceiving your tinnitus is a, a very, very important first step that I do with most of my clients. Um, from there, we go into um, yeah, looking at the common beliefs that they have around their tinnitus. So what is the most limiting belief that basically takes them um, 
into uh, into this vicious cycle of tinnitus thought and anxiety and uh, don't get me wrong like if you've listened to my episodes uh, that's where i started as well right so i have tinnitus for yeah well nearly 12 years now and i've started suffering from tinnitus when i was 19 and uh, only a few years after when i had a significant spike uh, that brought me to the level of tinnitus that i still have um being deaf on one ear that obviously was quite significant you know you only have one good in brackets ear so to say left so it's quite significant when your other other ear that that you have left has developed a severe tinnitus that you have to tackle that problem but um over the years i i, I found that um uh, it got it got better but it could have gotten better much quicker had i already known the tools that i'm tools and strategies that i'm using now in order to uh, coach the clients and of course these tools are also a process of coaching people over the last uh, two and a half years nearly already and working with clients all around the world and developing different strategies also looking at what science generally suggests so looking at what uh, world-class tinnitus researchers such as Rilana Chima from Belgium do Um, I have an episode on this podcast with Rilana as well where it's very interesting where we talk about spider phobia and tinnitus and um, yeah so I've used a lot of these tools and I've I've been able to combine a lot of knowledge into um, a toolbox um, combined also with my personal knowledge on what has helped me individually or what has helped me to shape my life differently around tinnitus despite severe tinnitus um, and for all of you out there I just um, always want to leave a few words of encouragement right tinnitus is not a life sentence tinnitus is not something that can or should hinder you from living your complete and full life um, enjoying the things that you do but it can so um, the the model of cognitive behavioral therapy is mostly there in combination with the survey so a survey tool usually we do that over google forms so i'll send you a google form and uh, with a few questions and you answer the questions and a few uh, multiple choice um, uh, thingies where i can uh, see how the intensity of your tinnitus develops but much more importantly important how you respond to your tinnitus and uh, how you respond to your tinnitus basically also determines the amount and the level of intrusiveness that you experience due to your tinnitus um, if you always react to your tinnitus and this is this is by the way i'm, I'm not that's that's completely um I'm, I'm not i'm not judging anyone right it's completely non-judgmental right like suffering is so individual and no one gets judged by me be be it someone with slight tinnitus who has extreme trouble sleeping or working in silence. I'm completely non-judgmental. You know, suffering is so individual. It's so individual what every one of us needs and, 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 and everyone needs a different way of dealing with this. But what is often very common is that people adopt unfortunately limiting and um and 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 maybe yeah unhelpful beliefs around their tinnitus. So tinnitus creeps in whenever there's silence and you develop a model of dealing with it. And most of this model is based on either avoidance or um, outbursts of fear, of panic, anxiety, sadness. And all of these things are then by you because, well, mostly we humans, we don't like these emotions. We don't want to experience them. So we push them further away. And what that does, or we push them further away on the one side and on the other side, we also mask the tinnitus. So we try to basically, we try to basically um, cover for it and basically to defer, we basically, we defer it. And when we defer tinnitus, most of the times it only comes back stronger, unfortunately. So I've recently worked with a client uh, from the U- US. Um, I won't say his name here, of course, but um, uh, we've been working o- a year ago already. We had a single coaching session and um, now he's decided to work with me in a one month coaching program and he's tried everything else. Every other internet tinnitus coach, um, be it a diet related, be it yoga, meditation, etc. related. And he, he said to me, he's tried everything else. And now he's come back to me and we are doing the one month uh, coaching session. And for him, it's extremely unpleasant to 
be with his tinnitus. He says from himself that his tinnitus might only be a four, a three or a four on a bad day. So on a good day, it's like a one or a two. But he is extremely distracted by it and he gets very anxious when he has a day where the tinnitus is like three or four. And then especially in the evening, the tension builds up so much that often he maybe falls asleep but wakes up only a couple hours later and then he can't go back to sleep anymore because he's so focused on the tinnitus. And most of the time he uses sounds or uh, podcasts or pretty much anything that he has uh, next to him in order to master tinnitus. And unfortunately, he's done that for um, over a year now. So what that basically did is his brain connected the tinnitus to negative emotion. Yeah? Therefore, it needs to be masked at all times so he doesn't have the trigger. As soon as he cannot master tinnitus in a circumstance, yeah, he gets very reactive. So either he feels like he can't can't take the challenge of um, uh, being in the moment, having to fulfill a task where no tinnitus masking is possible, or he is in an event where maybe he drives his car or something like that, and he still perceives and hears the tinnitus, and it's, it's extremely distressing for him. So tinnitus is basically claiming his whole life and thought process. And naturally, when he's had such a bad day, in the evening, you know, he's taught his brain that when tinnitus is masked and the anxiety is deferred, um, how how does he want his pl his brain to respond in the evening when he wants to go to sleep, right? If he's been obsessing and um, it's been difficult for him the whole day with the tinnitus, you, you know, and I'm, I'm, this is completely, again, free of judgment. I, I'm so sorry when I hear these cases and this is why I'm very luckily and, and humbled to, to do the, the program and the things that I do. But I really sincerely want him to help to get better to um, unravel this uh, negative uh, connection that tinnitus and um, his thought patterns have actually adapted and established and we want to interrupt them and how is that possible we first evaluate it we look at it then we see how and why the anxiety creeps in and the most difficult experience is when he told me that he has been doing some tinnitus meditations um, and I guess the understanding for him was the tinnitus meditation is supposed to calm him down. Um, but how is he supposed to sit in peace when the tinnitus is blaring loud and uh, he's supposed to tolerate the tinnitus? Of course, there will be a moment where um, he's inclined to just get up and mask his tinnitus again. Um, and my response to that was, in my opinion, your meditation is to sit and be with the tinnitus. So the meditation in your part is not something that you say, okay, let's meditate for 10, 15 minutes and then I will get better and I will feel so much more rested and so on and so forth. No, these 10, 15 minutes might be extremely challenging. So as it might be extremely challenging when you stop masking your tinnitus for a while, because all the anxiety, all the deferred fear or pain or sadness will come up and will manifest itself and it will be a very strong emotion. But this is where the gold nugget lies. This is where we can start working. This is where we can start signaling his brain that the stimulus that he has connected with something to be extremely dangerous, there has built up neuroplasticity has built up that every single time yeah we humans we're very automatic so 80 percent of the tasks that we do in the morning when we go to a coffee machine we press the button we put water in the kettle completely automated tasks yeah that secures our, our survival if we had to think very hard to basically do everything in a day we would not have any energy free to do other things so his brain has so associated tinnitus with this negative reaction and it's become an automatic event to him. And we have to be able to break that. And in order to break that, what do we have to do? My task to him was to basically try and make the meditation on tinnitus, but not on tinnitus, but simply on being able to sit 10 minutes in silence with the eyes closed and accepting whatever comes even if that might be the most difficult and hardest 10 minutes of his day. And for many of you, I think that is the most hardest and most difficult moment, but I think it can also be one of the most rewarding ones because when you realize that you don't have to run away from it, when you realize that it's nothing inherently dangerous happening to you when you actually sit and are with the tinnitus, this is where the golden nugget lies because your brain 
will realize that as well and your brain will establish a new thought pattern and this is the second part of the coaching program is called acceptance and commitment therapy and acceptance is nothing negative it's not like oh well i don't know there is nothing else i can do with my tinnitus and i guess i'll just be stuck with it forever and i'll just have to accept that no not at all Go check out the episode with Rilana Chima that I made on um, acceptance and commitment therapy and how it's basically also used to, for example, treat spider, uh, spider phobia or chronic insomnia. It's a scientifically evaluated tool that is able to break these negative pathways, these negative neuroplastic um, uh, connections that have been made in your brain. And it literally helps you to transform your tinnitus anxiety because once you repeat the action of being with your tinnitus, and a very other important part is when tinnitus anxiety comes up, we label tinnitus anxiety. So let's say you experience a knot in your stomach when the tinnitus anxiety comes up and the knot in your stomach it basically feels a certain way you could describe it with a color and you could hashtag it you could hashtag it tinnitus not hashtag tinnitus not and the more often you will do that the more often your brain when you arrive in the current moment your brain will perceive that you are not in dangerous in a, in a dangerous condition our brains are basically <laughs> based on uh, what it was 200,000 years ago. So your brain doesn't know that you're not in danger. Um, but when you are obsessing and anxious and, 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 and you get upset about tinnitus, your brain triggers its natural fight or flight instinct. How could it be different? Like the brain is trying to secure our survival naturally, of course. So in order to be with your tinnitus, label it, really allow the feelings that are associated with your tinnitus, even if they might be very, very difficult for you to, to go through, um, is one of the biggest tools that you have to signal your brain that you're currently not in danger. Therefore, your brain will learn how to literally adapt to the stimulus. And this is not something that is a simple acceptance and like, oh, it's just the way it is. This is a very, very, very active prog pro a very, very active process. And it's something that requires a huge amount of work and also courage. I was thanking my client for sharing his experience with me of doing this anxiety exercise with me and in front of me because it's a very powerful emotion and we're all vulnerable of sharing our emotions. Um, but it's, it's, it's extremely powerful in establishing uh, for your brain that tinnitus inherently cannot hurt you it's not dangerous your brain is mistakenly flicking on the fight or flight instinct and the more you do this the more often your brain also knows that everything is well more or less all right and it will help you to get to sleep in the evening it will help you when you wake up at night to use these labeling techniques um I have another video on my YouTube channel. It's called uh, Tinnitus and Sleep. Um, if you guys want to, um, uh, I can link that in the description below of my uh, of this podcast episode. And I explain again how what, what you can do and the techniques that you can use when you wake up in the middle of the night and you perceive your tinnitus and uh, it's difficult to go back to sleep. It's very similar, um, but I explained the uh, strategy a bit more in depth in the video. So... Um, these two steps with cognitive behavior therapy, analyzing where you're actually at. Yeah, We're making a very, very individual um, uh, questionnaire that you take every single day. Um, and then we analyze what is basically the biggest the biggest triggers of tinnit of your tinnitus moments throughout the day yeah how can we how can we get into an ego perspective so you can dissociate a bit from these emotions and feelings as well so the more often you realize how you react upon tinnitus you also realize there would probably be a different way to react to it and um, a big problem is and this is something that we discussed in the zoom session in the zoom live session last night on the outing tinnitus community 20 30 years ago there was no google no one could Google what tinnitus actually means and immediately find negative forums uh, full of people who um, haven't been able to overcome this difficulty for over 10 years already and they don't know what to do and they don't know where to go or what program next to try. And, you know, simply you had to go on with your life. There was no other way. Um, if you asked the doctor, he was like, yeah, well, there's something that happens. There's nothing dangerous. We know that, you know, and there was nothing else you could do about it. 
So you had to go on with your life and continue to things that you do. And you would still enjoy your life. You would still do all the things that you would do. Um, but in today's society, we have the accessibility of the internet, of the knowledge to Google tinnitus and to see how many people get so upset. And every single time you read on that, you fuel your own anxiety and you feed that emotional part of your brain that knows that tinnitus is probably something dangerous, so you should react to it in a depressed or sad or anxious or angry or hopeless kind of way. Um, and it's very difficult if you have adopted this kind of thought pattern for a very long period of time to basically dissociate from this thought pattern. But this is what we do with survey tools, with looking at your progress from week to week, really fine tuning your individual five step tinnitus action plan, seeing how you can progress yourself and transform into your best version despite tinnitus, giving you tools of acceptance and commitment therapy so you can actively go into um, getting used to the tinnitus stimulus because what happens then when your brain knows that the stimulus is no longer dangerous, yeah, your brain does something that's very natural. Your brain naturally ascribes it less meaning. Therefore, the tinnitus returns into the background. So what we actually see is that people, when they report a lowering in tinnitus, is the tinnitus intensity could still be the same in, in uh, uh, objectively measured decibel levels. However, the brain knows that the stimulus is nothing dangerous. Therefore, the brain is like, all right, this seems uh, it's not bad. It's not nothing dangerous. Might be safe to disregard it. Therefore, it goes into the background. You could compare it with you sitting on a busy street, cars running behind you, and you sit with a few friends and have dinner. Yeah, There might be cars passing at more than 70 decibels, 75, 80 decibels. That's very noisy if you are in a quiet environment. And yet, what you focused on is the conversation that you're having with your friends. So the cars do not bother you at all, and you won't even experience them, although the stimulus is constantly there. You see what I mean? So your brain is more than capable to disregard stimulus that it that it regards as non-important in the current situation. And using these tools that I've described of the CBT, uh, CBT and ABC model of uh, cognitive behavior therapy as well as accept acceptance and commitment therapy will literally help you to completely re recreate the way your brain perceives and the way you act upon tinnitus and therefore help you to build your best life despite tinnitus. Um, yeah, I, I hope this has been helpful for you. You can, of course, uh, use these resources, um, uh, build your own tinnitus evaluation questionnaire. Um, if you're interested in uh, and either the one month, two month or three month coaching program, go to outringtinnitus.com. Um, I'm still working on the beta version of the course. So if you're interested in the beta version of the course, I have the link where you can inscribe to get the updates and get the course as soon as it launches. Um, that is full with materials that you can use in order to put uh, the Serbi, the cognitive behavioral therapy model, as well as the acceptance and commitment therapy model into place and to really continue to outering your tinnitus because there's so many more important things that I want you to focus on to build your happy life despite tinnitus. This is my passion. This is my profession. Um, I hope this episode has been helpful. It's been uh, certainly uh, 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 yeah, something that I've been wanting to do for a while to let you guys know um, uh, how my coaching actually works. Um, yeah, join the Outring Tinnitus community. We have live events uh, every week on Zoom. So we meet up in the community and discuss the most pressing issues. Um, you can find that a link to the Facebook community in the uh, description below. Uh, yeah, for all other information, go to outringtinnitus.com or send me an email to frida at outringtinnitus.com. I'll see you in the next podcast episode and I hope you guys have a great time and all the best of luck with your tinnitus. Until soon, goodbye. Thank you very much for listening to the Outring Tinnitus podcast. I am looking forward to also welcome you on my website at outringtinnitus.com or if you have any questions, please mail to frida at outringtinnitus.com. See you next time. <laughs>